I get it. Your business is sophisticated. You have expertise, and lots of it. Your customers are a discerning bunch of highly intelligent intellectuals, smarter than the average bear or cat, just like you. Your digital marketing might be underperforming because you're giving your customers way too much credit in the intelligence department than they deserve. But what if I told you that your customers are still clicking on links like this girl didn't know what's inside her, not until they cut off her pants, shocking, and baby ducks see water for the first time. Can you believe what they do? I mean, if you are curious, like I was, they sip the water for a little while and then some of them jump in and have a little swim. But the point is that you might be turning your customers off by sharing too much of your expertise in your website and on your social content. And this happens more often than not. The businesses that think they've nailed this are often the ones that are most guilty of sharing too much expertise. Yeah, I hate to break it to you, but your customers might be stupider than you think. And if I'm right, it means that your website and social content is gonna be generating less traffic and fewer conversions than it should be. So let's get this sorted. But let's start with the story. And I'm gonna change the client's business to protect their identity. So we're working with this company and let's say that they're a consultancy firm that helps businesses buy other companies. Now, our clients had really deep expertise in this area. They know every aspect of buying and selling a business because they've been in this industry for years. They know it inside out. They know all the jargon. They know all the processes. They've done this loads and loads of times. So of course, on their website, they wanted to share this expertise. They wanted to demonstrate that they are the gurus in this space. Perfectly natural, you might say. Of course, you might say great idea, you might say. The trouble is that their customers are buying a business for the first time. Their customers don't know the jargon world. They're still on the starting line grappling with the basics. So if our client shows up as a jargon spouting guru, that mismatch between the expertise levels is going to completely alienate their customers, meaning that their website's not going to convert as well and they're not going to get as much traffic as they could be. Now you might be watching this thinking, oh, they're crazy. How could they get this so wrong? But let me suggest this to you. My guess is that if your business has a sales team, that sales team understands less about the products and services and the intricacies and the detail than the others in the company. Unfortunately, in many organizations, the sales team is sort of looked down on for this lesser level of knowledge. But that is probably wrong. Whereas actually your sales team or your customer support team might actually be the ones that are most closely calibrated to your customer's level of expertise. Okay, so there's really two areas where your customer being slightly stupider than you think can really hurt your digital marketing efforts. The first is when you have a technical content mismatch. Now, a little while ago, I needed to see a neurologist and I saw a few neurologists and I quickly realized that there are two types of neurologists in the world. The first type is what I'm calling the impenetrable guru. They understand deeply how your brain works, all the chemicals, all the functions, the triggers and all of this type of stuff and they love nothing more than sharing this knowledge with you as rapidly and as much detail as possible. The second type of neurologist is what I call the credible normal folk. Now, of course, they've got a really good level of neurology qualification and understanding. These people are still certified neurologists. But what they really understand is that the patient doesn't need to know all of the detail. The patient just basically wants to know, what should I do? Now, in business, the tendency is to try and appear as the impenetrable guru to demonstrate everything that we know about our area of expertise in order to impress our potential customers and clients. But what actually tends to get the result is to be the credible normal folk, the person or business or brand whose expertise is condensed into something that the customer understands and values, and we talk in their terms. Let's look at an example. On this product page for a Samsung portable radiography unit, which is kind of like an X-ray machine that you can wheel around a hospital, Notice how the tone and the expertise of this content is not focused on the person who understands deeply the technology behind this machine at all. How they've positioned this product is basically how Apple positions an iPhone. They're talking about things like charging times, how long you can use it, how many pictures it takes, and how long it lasts on standby. They break down how this product helps you at different stages of your workflow by presenting each feature in ways that the customer understands. Everything is written in complete plain English. You might think that you would never be able to buy a portable radiography unit because you don't have the expertise. But I can tell you that if you spend some time reading this product page, you'll be quite quickly convinced that this is an excellent product 
for your needs because everything is written in a way that you understand. They haven't focused on the technical details because they know that the technical details are not what sells this product. In another example, which is much more B2C, these Alienware headphones are sold to gamers. A lot of headphone firms invariably end up talking about things like impedance, frequency response, signal to noise ratio, the materials used in the drivers. But the trouble is that none of this means anything to the regular customer. These headphones are pitched to gamers and Dell has understood that to gamers, the most important thing is that they enjoy their games, that they're comfortable to wear, and that they freaking win. Check out this paragraph, what winning sounds like. Hear the enemy before they hear you, even from a distance. With Alienware Immersive Audio Technology, featuring our best-in-class custom tuned drivers, custom designed acoustic chambers, and custom fit ear pads that give you a wider and more dynamic soundstage, both in battle and out. They're talking their customers' language, and they're saying, these headphones will help you win. All that technical gibberish and specification is buried at the bottom of the page because they know that's not what's gonna sell this product. So how about you? Can you say that your website, social, and blog content always ties back to your customers' goals and the stuff that's most important to them? Or do you fall prey to the classic trap of sharing everything that you know about your product or service in the hope of impressing your customer? Now, sometimes you find a market that hasn't quite made up its mind about how much technical info it needs to share for its customers. And I think Bespoke Vitamins is one such example. So the pitch for Bespoke Vitamins is basically you fill in a questionnaire that asks you about age, gender, lifestyle, and any things that you wanna fix, like I'm always tired or I get grumpy or whatever. And they will then mix your vitamins for you and they typically cost more than if you're just gonna buy a multivitamin that you take every day. So that's the pitch. But there's a spectrum of how technical you present this information to potential customers. So in the blue corner, we have a company like Bionic who shares fairly technical level information on their site and the site looks quite technical to try and back this up. So here we've got the different ratios of each vitamin for different types of people. We're showing them in milligrams and micrograms, I think that is. We've got stuff here like 10 million possible formula combinations, sounds complicated. We've got these charts, we've got the questionnaire here being presented, it kind of looks like a white paper, it looks quite scientific. We've got more formulation here as well. And the whole thing looks quite sciencey. Now over in the red corner, we've got companies like Vitamin Buddy, which are pitched completely differently. It's bright colors, it's healthy, it's happy, it's saving you time. Find out what vitamins your body really needs and get your first 30 days on us. Start the quiz. There's no information here about million micrograms for each different type of person. It's just vegan friendly, made in the UK and gluten free. How it works, take the quiz, get your plan, choose your plan, receive your vitamins. Wham. They haven't built their credibility through sharing sciencey stuff. They've built their credibility through sharing some of the sciencey people behind the business. And then you've got companies in the middle of this spectrum, the purple corner, who are mostly just Hey, personalized vitamins, take the quiz. But then they do have a bit of sciencey stuff in there as well. Now, I don't know what's right for this customer base. I don't know what the right answer is in this market. But if I was in this space, I'd be spending some serious time talking to customers and potential customers to find out where they're at, how much knowledge they had about this stuff, what they were looking for in a company. I might try and find someone who spends their time talking to these people. So someone in vitamin sales or even staff at health food shops who might have spent their time advising customers and will be able to give you an indication of how the general public is calibrated and thinks about this stuff. The most dangerous thing I could do though would be to spend a year getting really stuck into building the personalized vitamin company, understanding the details of every aspect of it and then going straight into writing copy for it or writing social content or designing the marketing strategy because I'm going to be completely miscalibrated to my potential customers. I'm going to have become the impenetrable guru during that time and I'm gonna have lost my ability to talk in the language that my customers use. I'm gonna bore them to death, unless they've taken anti-boredom vitamins. And by the way, this is also another reason why having an outside marketing agency like Exposure Ninja can really help because we can give you feedback on this stuff based on our audience research. Now, of course, I don't wanna minimize the importance of technical expertise when you're selling to a very sophisticated and technical customer, but I'm yet to see a business where their customer wasn't slightly less technically inclined than they originally thought. The second way this can hurt your digital marketing is if you're focusing your audience too narrowly. To explain what I mean, let me show you some examples. The first and most extreme example is Gary V. So if you don't know Gary, he has agencies which work with predominantly larger brands. So his target audience is like the chief marketing officer of Unilever. So why is the content on his YouTube page all about the path to happiness, three ingredients to success? This is where unhappiness begins. He realizes that YouTube is a flywheel marketing channel i.e. the more visibility and the more engagement he gets, the more visibility and the more engagement he gets. 
a great way to appear on the radar for the CMO of Unilever is to appear in their YouTube feed with millions of views. This is very difficult for these people to ignore. It then sets him apart from all of his competitors. This content is a message for the masses to build visibility and get on the radar of a niche group. And to an extent, this is the model used by most social media influencers because all social media channels are basically flywheel marketing channels. Sally Krawcheck is an example on LinkedIn. So her business, Elvest, is an investment platform for women who have a lot of money to invest. But her social media content is general finance, leadership, and gender equality. This is a message for the masses to build visibility, knowing that that visibility is gonna get her on the radar of her target customer. Now, this is the same on all social channels. As you build up that flywheel momentum by getting more visibility, you get more visibility from that and get on the radar of your target customers. Now, the same can be said with your website content and the stuff that you post on your blog. So here we're looking at aabrs.com. They are an insolvency practitioner firm. So they help businesses that are going out of business to wind down and liquidate, basically. Why have they posted this post, which ranks for when is my VAT due? This is a really broad topic, considering that their actual target audience is company directors who are probably about to go out of business. They even post stuff that seems completely unrelated to this, like what small business grants are available for women. So what's the game plan here? Well, the game plan is to get traffic, links, and credibility. For example, this link from Iowa State University for that article about small business grants for women. All of this builds the site's authority and allows them to rank for higher commercial intent terms like voluntary liquidation. It's a message for the masses which increases their visibility amongst their niche audience. So had they just stuck to posting content for people that are right in the stage of liquidation, they wouldn't have had those links, they wouldn't have had that authority, and they wouldn't have appeared in the game when that person searches for voluntary liquidation. It's a message for the masses that increases their visibility for their niche audience. And it's only happened because they're willing to not be seen as the impenetrable guru, spouting technical jargon and demonstrating how much they understand about their business. And by the way, one company that has absolutely nailed this is masterclass.com. Check out this video where we break down their $7 million a month SEO strategy. It is genius. A lot of work, but it is paying off big time for them. If you've enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, see you soon.